So here we have a working material that is doing what we want. And now we're going to go and clean up a few things by seeing how we can remove some artifacts. If we zoom over to one area, we can see some of the streaking we were seeing before. This is again due to there being opaque pixels around the border of the tiles that repeat due to the UVs clamping at the edge of a tile. Also, the reason they are diagonal this time is simply because we have rotation applied. Let's deal with this texture, and it's here in between the tiles that we have the pixels that are causing the trouble here. We can go back into Krita, and I'll go to File Open, and navigate to the Blood Splatter Base 01 PNG, and open it. Just like last time, I'm going to make sure that my paint tool is selected, and turn on the eraser toggle, and I'll start to paint out the offending pixels in between the tiles. I can change the size of the brush up in the slider along the top here, and that will make the brush smaller and allow us to get in between the tiles here. Then I'll go to File, Save As, and I'll save it as Blood Splatter Base 01 underscore Edit PNG. Hit OK, and back in Unreal, I'll import a new asset and navigate to where I just saved that image. I'll leave it selected in the content browser and dive inside the material and go to the four texture sample nodes. I'll select them and I'll click the white arrow to reset the texture to the one we've currently got selected. Hit apply. And back in the main viewport, we can see that it's fixed our streaking issue. I've got a special texture which I've created, which just labels the splats with numbers and colors so we can see easily which splat is selected. I'll import this test.png file, and if we open it up in the content browser, then what we have here is a 2x2 two two splat arrangement, where each splat is a number from 1 to 4, and a unique colour in each quadrant. So let's go back to our main material, and apply this to see what we get. I'll select all four splat texture sample nodes, and apply that texture to all of them, And here we have some of the number texture appearing, but since we have it still plugged into the reflection slot, then we're only seeing the reflection result without the colors. It's also quite large across the surface, so I'm going to go back to the main material and increase the tiling amount. I'll set it to four, and that seems to let us see the splats quite nicely. Now I'll get the output of the combined splats and plug that into the diffuse color and now we're seeing the numbers and colors in isolation. I'll actually set the tiling back to one to make the size a bit bigger here. The last thing I wanna take a look at is the grid artifact that we can see at the tile boundaries here. You can see these lines which flicker and distract from the overall effect. The reason this is happening is because GPUs use something called MIP maps which are textures which are lower resolution than the full resolution texture. They're used because a distance is further away from the camera. You can get texture aliasing, where texture samples themselves will sparkle and flicker. The reason they look better when sampling lower resolution versions of the textures at long distances is that they effectively blur the texture and represent the average value of those texture samples for the current pixel on the screen, which actually covers multiple texture samples. The way that the GPU knows which mipmap level of the texture to sample from is that it looks at how quickly the UVs are changing across the screen pixels. If the UVs have jumped a large value, then it might mean that there are multiple texture samples that should contribute to that pixel, and hence a lower resolution mipmap is chosen. The issue here with our material is that due to us using lots of manipulation of the UVs, including lots of multiplying UVs, noise, frac nodes, flooring and offsets, the change in UVs in the screen space appears to the GPU to be changing rapidly in these areas at the tile boundaries. What we have to do is actually calculate what MIP map level we want manually and tell the texture sample node which level to sample. We can select the texture sample node and there's a setting called MIP value mode. If we change this from none to MIP level, then over on the texture sample node, we get an input plug appear which allows us to plug in a value that we want that can change per pixel. To calculate the correct MIP level, 
Unreal has a material function that does that for us, called Compute MIP Level. What this does is take in a set of UVs that we provide, which in our case will give the original UVs, and I'll create a reroute node to clean things up a bit here, and another one over here. The Compute MIP Level material function also takes in a texture size parameter, which basically states what the texture size should be and scales the MIP level calculation accordingly. I'll create a constant parameter for this input, which I'll call MIP size. And let's try a value of 512 for the texture size as a starting point. Now we can plug in the result of this into the level input of the texture sample nodes. Now let's look and see how this affects our texture. We can see in the near distance that the artifact is pretty much gone, but in the far distance, the MIPS have been calculated at a level that is causing too much bleeding between the tiles. Now if we increase that MIP size value, we're telling Unreal that the texture is higher resolution and that it has to go even further MIP levels to blur them to cover one pixel, which is not what we want. Instead, I'll reduce this to around 100, which seems to give us the desired MIP level we're after. In fact, it might be a bit too much because we're getting a bit of sizzling and aliasing here. So I'll increase to around 160. This is actually an extreme example because this texture has pixels very near the border of each tile. So it's more likely to cause bleeding between tiles. If we switch back to the puddle splat texture and plug back the color into the diffuse slot, then we can see that the flickering we saw isn't too bad and only really gets to be a problem at extreme glancing angles. There are more advanced ways to tackle this issue, and even then for this kind of effect, it's most suited for close-up effects, and you blend the effect away over distance. And if you did want to use this for splats further away, decreasing the tile size will probably get the best results for covering a terrain. Well, hopefully you've gained a lot from this module. We learned some really basic fundamentals on how to manipulate UVs for tiling, and how to use random values to procedurally vary shaders. Looking forward to the next module, we'll be using these concepts to create a damage accumulation effect using render targets.